Hey guys, Kale here from Rook Empire Gaming, and today we're going to discuss ammo and armor and try to gain a better understanding of what's going on in game. Now, I will say some of this is speculation based off of just in game experience, since currently we do not have enough information on the hard numbers from the devs as to what's really going on behind the scenes, but this information will better prepare the new player for what to expect when they go into raid. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, I'm going to quickly cover ammo. I don't want to gloss over this though because ammo is by far the number one most important thing to understand in Tarkov. All the damage that is done and calculated to your success in the game is all going to depend on the ammo that you have. Now I will be including below the video a link to the official ammo chart that the devs update after every time they make changes to the ammo prices, uh, armor pin values, and overall base damages. So make sure you check the, uh, the links below the video, and uh, that ammo chart link will be there. So we're going to start with 545. Now this is going to be my opinion of the best ammo to use as you progress from early levels up into the high levels of the game. So on 545, you're going to start Proper level 1, you get access to the T round. The T round is going to give you a base damage of 57 with armor pin of 20. When you get to proper level 2, you're going to gain access to the PP round. It has a base damage of 46, armor pin of 27, but it is a fairly expensive round, so you can technically still continue on using the T round if you want. If you do have uh, quite a bit of extra rubles laying around and you want to uh, invest a little bit more then the uh, the PP round would be the uh, the next jump up. Now once you get to proper level 3 you're going to gain access to the BT round that's going to have a base damage of 44 armor pin value of 33 and then finally once you get to proper level 4 you're going to unlock the BS round that has a base damage of 40 but with an armor pin value of 50. Now these values are based off of the 0.9 patch cycle after the August adjustments. So again, the order that I would do them in, T, most likely staying with T until you get to BT. If you have the extra income, you can pick up the PP round. It does a little bit better damage, but at a much higher cost. Finally getting to the BS round, and this is where you're going to want to to stay once you get to that. Moving on to 5.56. Five, Peacekeeper level 1, you're going to gain access to the 856, base damage 57, armor pin 23. At level 2 Peacekeeper, you're going to move up to the 856A1, which is 55 base, 33 armor pin. And you will stay with the 856A1 until you unlock at Peacekeeper level 4, the M995 round, which is overall the best round. And in my opinion, currently the only round worth shooting 4, 5, 5, 6 right now. I honestly would tell people to either shoot 5, 4, 5 or 7, 6, 2 right now in the current patch cycle. Um, 5, 5, 6 just does not feel very good. However, if you do want to use 5, 5, 6, I would recommend waiting until you do have access to the 995 mod, which has a base value of 42 and an armor pin of 53. It is an incredibly expensive round. So, again, I don't recommend 5.56 five, ammo during this current patch cycle. It just does not feel good. It doesn't have the stopping power of the other rounds. So, I highly recommend that you um, stay down with the 5.45. Maybe roll in some of the 7.62 every once in a while until you get to 9.95. And then make sure you just understand that uh, this is an incredibly expensive round. And just right now does not feel like it has the stopping power of like the 762 or the consistency of the 545. All right, now moving on to 762. Really, with the new adjustments made to 762, um, you're probably going to stay with the PS rounds all the way until you unlock the BP rounds. Uh, I have provided a, a secondary option. Uh, in case you do want to make a slight adjustment. But uh, my recommendation is 
proper level one, you gain access to the PS round, which has base damage of 56 and an armor pin of 32. It's a very cheap round right now. At proper level two, you do gain access to the T45M. It has a slightly higher base damage at 58, but you lose quite a bit of armor pin, dropping down to 26. And the round actually does cost more than the PS. So my recommendation is stay with the PS round until you unlock the BPs at proper level three. Now the BP round is an expensive round, but it has a base damage of 50 and an armor pin of 45. This round feels great, has incredible stopping power, and it just overall, in my opinion right now, out of the three primary ammo types, this round is far and away my favorite and feels the absolute best right now in the game. So again, that would be PS rounds all the way up until you get access to BP. Uh, if you want a slightly different round every once in a while, you can switch to the T45M. But honestly, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I would just stick with your PS rounds until you get to BP. So that that's definitely the way I feel things are in the current patch cycle of 0.9. Again, check the link below that chart is updated regularly by the devs and changes usually with every patch cycle there's a slight change to some of the ammo so it's a uh, it's a link you're going to want to have bookmarked you're going to want to have it uh, checked every time there's a new patch cycle and uh, definitely check in with us if you have any questions Okay guys, we're going to cover something that's probably one of the biggest mysteries in the game right now, and, and that's armor. There is a lot of heated discussion going on. Again, we're in the .9 patch cycle, getting ready for the .10 patch cycle to drop. Uh, if you're involved in any of the discussions, or you check on the, the Reddit or the official Tarkov forums, you're going to undoubtedly come across multiple threads and discussions about armor, whether it's armor bug, armor being too tanky, what's going on with my armor. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation. There's also a lot of just pure speculation. Again, I briefly touched on it earlier that we don't have the hard numbers as to what's going on server side with regards to ammo and its interaction with armor. So some of this is just based off of in-game experience. Uh, the main thing you need to pay attention to with your armor are these numbers down here. The number on the right is the total max durability that that armor has at that point. So like the, the gazelle armor here is showing 56.3. Now that's not what a brand new max durability gazelle armor would have. This armor has been used, it has taken damage, it's been repaired. Now, you can see this one, the Gen 4, it's, it's a brand new, this is its max value when you buy it, brand new is 62. Now I've seen and heard a lot of people say that, you know, if, if this was down to a, a one out of one, then you still get full max value for the armor when it around it is actually being shot at it. Personally, I don't 100% agree with that analogy. Um, that That's probably how it should work, but it is my experience in game that the lower this value is, the more likely it feels like the rounds are actually penetrating. I feel like once your armor drops below once the armor durability drops below like the armor pin value of a round, it feels like the ammo actually has an increased chance of pretty much ignoring the armor or it has just a, a, a higher pin value overall. Uh, my general rule of thumb is, especially on these high-end armors, once it gets down below like 40 uh, especially when you start talking about, like, I've, I've come across guys that I've killed in game who have, like, a, like, they entered the, the raid with a Ford armor on that had, like, a max value of 16. 
in my opinion, at that point in time, once armor reaches a really low max durability level, I look to just go ahead and sell it. Even if you have to sell it to fence, get something back out of that armor and apply it towards a new one. Uh, again, this is based off of my in-game experience. I feel that when the armor durability level drops below the armor pin value of a specific ground being shot at it, so, for instance, the BP has a 45 armor pin value. I, I feel like if this, gen, if this gazelle armor gets below 45, these BP rounds almost feel like they're 100% penetrating and ignoring the armor completely. Now, it, it might be slowing it down a little bit. It might be lowering the total damage of the base value of this round. But my general rule of thumb for chest armor is once it gets below, definitely below 40, um, I look to go ahead and, and get some return on the value back out of it, even if that means I have to sell the armor back to fence uh, just to get something back out of it. And then I apply that towards the purchase of a new armor. Uh, I do not like entering a raid with a heavily damaged chest rig. I, I just feel like you're basically going, you're, you're, you're basically throwing money away in my opinion at that point when you enter a raid with a chest armor that's already really, really significantly damaged. Um, and, and, and something else that I do want to cover is you, you have to look like when it comes to your helmets. As you can see here, the, the Alton helmet has a base level of 45. The face shield has a 50. Now, when you put these together, you suddenly get a new value. This says 95. This does not mean the whole helmet is suddenly 95. That's not the way it's working. You have to look at these base values. So anything from the side, you can inspect over here, and it tells you exactly where your armor zones are at top, nape, and ears. Anything from the side, the back, the top, on this helmet, it only has a 45 durability limit. The face shield only has a 50 durability limit. Now yes, when you combine them, you're getting a new value, but this is not the actual value of the helmet. You have to understand that your helmet only has a value of 45. Your face shield only has a value of 50. Just because you put the face shield on does not mean you suddenly have a 95 durability level to your face shield. You only have 50 to that face shield. That means that you're only really going to stop one, maybe two rounds of like the BP from going through and, and hitting you in the face. Uh, I've seen a number of people that it feels like they think they suddenly have this 95 value and then they're going onto the forums after they get like two tapped with nine mil and they're complaining and, and and it's it's really just a misinformation and it's understandable since again we don't have hard number values on what's going on in the back end now I will say that there is a general consensus across the community right now that there is an armor bug going on and there's lots of different ways that people think uh, of tricking the system to stop that armor bug from happening. The number one agreed upon way to stop it is when you get into the raid you have to actually take the armor off, uh, you, not not moving it to your backpack you literally have to like hover over and physically drop the armor off of you onto the ground and then pick it back up and put it back on now obviously most of you if you've been playing for a while know that there is a danger when you take the armor off that way in the raid sometimes it can get bugged out and then you're just you know lost the whole entire armor completely uh, for me personally, I don't really even mess with it. I feel like my success rate, just having the armor on and wearing it and not worrying about it, isn't. Uh, I haven't experienced too many issues with actual chest armor. 
I do feel like there is something going on with helmets and face shields, especially your fast MT helmets and fast MT face shields. Um, uh, there, there's again, it's it's all speculation. We don't 100% know what is going on. My general recommendation is play around with it, see what you find works for you, and if it works for you, great. Um, you know, maybe you can throw it in the comments and, and say what you do in order to try to get it to work. Uh, it's, there are some times where I don't even really mess with wearing a helmet anymore. Uh, just because it feels like half the time it's it's a roll of the dice whether or not the helmet actually is working or not, especially those with face shields on them. Uh, I, I will say that definitely pay attention to your durability levels. Uh, again, you don't have a 95 durability. It's 45 for the helmet area and 50 for the face shield. Uh, and, and again, there's a definite bug with the armor we don't 100 percent know what it is it, it does seem like there are times where it completely isn't working but i honestly believe that a majority of the time the issue is people are probably going into the raid with armor that is really low durability and i don't believe that just because it has any durability at all that it's 100 percent being applied towards the round shooting at it so again, my general rule of thumb, if your chest armor is below 40, um, then look to sell it, get some money back out of that investment, and apply it towards something with a brand new durability level. Uh, I know this can be difficult, especially if you're having trouble making money or you're, you're low on funds currently. It can be tempting to try to squeeze one one or two more raids out of a chest armor but you have to think of it in terms of is it really worth going into the raid with a low durability chest rig to try to save maybe a hundred thousand fifty thousand rubles if you end up dying and you lose the whole kit and you have to replace everything you're going to spend a lot more than that 50 to 100,000 rubles as opposed to just buying a brand new one. So again, trying to provide you guys better information. Uh, again, a lot of it is speculation because one, the overall consensus is there is something going on with armor. We can't quite put a 100% accurate pin on what that is, but definitely Watch your durability levels, and as long as you have the funds to do so, once the armor gets below a certain value, sell it, get something back out of it. There's a lot of times you can actually, uh, if you repair it all the way back up to its max durability, you can a lot of times sell those back to like Prapper or Peacekeeper and, and, and get a significant return on your investment. But worst case scenario, sell it to Fence get something back out of it and apply it towards a new chest rig. So hopefully this will provide some helpful information. Uh, again, I really feel like the, the main area people need to focus on is, is their ammo, uh, paying attention to the, the rounds that they're shooting at people and, and understanding that there is something going on with armor I personally don't believe that armor is too tanky. I think that something's going on, again, with the high armor pin value rounds. Um, there definitely is something weird going on with helmets right now, especially in the, the face shield area. So pay attention to your numbers. Understand your, your ammo values on the chart and make the best decision you can make based off of your in-game experience. And feel free to share your thoughts, your opinions on what's going on in the comments. And hopefully in the coming days and weeks as, as more patches and hot fixes are applied, we'll at least, if it's not fixed, hopefully as a community we can come to a, a better understanding of what's going on so that we can maximize our efforts in-game.
So that's going to do it for today. I hope this information provides you increased success and survivability. As always, be sure to like and subscribe as more videos are on the way. And come check us out on Twitter at Empire Rook. Or come hang out with us on Twitch TV at Rook underscore Kale. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.